Yes, they don't know the Canadian bit, but DU, uh, and thanks for bringing that up. Uh, it's, I think, going to be probably one of the biggest stories to come out of this situation, uh, both for Iraqi people and troops serving there. Um, for example, the 90, 1991 Gulf War, just to give you perspective, uh, the Pentagon admits to using 300 tons of DU munitions. DU is basically radioactive weapons. Uh, it's a tip. It's extremely heavy metal, but it's uh, low-grade radioactive radioactive material. Um, but when the rounds or the missiles tipped with this hit something, it basically spews radioactive dust everywhere that goes into the sand, goes into the water supply. So 300 tons used in 91. Uh, from 1992 to 2000, the incidence of childhood leukemia in southern Iraq, which was hit uh, the hardest, that in Baghdad, but southern Iraq, uh, from kids one to five, childhood leukemia increased 12-fold. Um, we, we have entire areas down there that are completely irradiated just from that. And then on the U.S. side, and remember how short that war was, I mean, we had U.S. troops that were on the ground in Iraq for a week, two weeks, maybe three or four. I think the max was six. Um, and we've had 11,000 U.S. soldiers at a minimum die of Gulf War syndrome so far uh, since 91, and that's not that long ago. 11, uh, over 11,000. Um, so to this war, the Pentagon admits to having used already over 1,200 tons, and they're still using it every single day. And look how long those troops have been on the ground. And with the Iraqis, again, just being there, it's impossible to go around and not run into people that, um, oh yeah, my, my wife has breast cancer, oh yeah, my cousin just had a miscarriage, or yeah, my, my grandma just died of cancer, she lives down in Basra. I mean, it's, 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 it's epidemic, uh, the levels of cancer there. So absolutely, it's, it's uh, uh, another important, critically important aspect of it.